I don't know how's it going. Very good, thank you. Very Sounds good. Like you're eating a frog. <laughs> it's fighting back, Barry. Ah, good man, good man. So, uh, you guys all having a good week? Hopefully, you are. So, uh, uh, welcome, welcome to our our Tuesday night webinar. Just um, so, who's new? Uh, Marlon, who's new? We've got Giselle's new. Welcome, Giselle. Great having you uh, this evening. And Giselle anyone else new? <clears throat> Giselle and Simone. Simone. Good evening, Simone. Great having you on as well. And obviously, welcome to um, to all of you guys that are on here regularly. So great uh, great having you on. And Matomi, Matomi, welcome. Good having you on for the first time. So, yeah, as Marlon says, you know, one of the things that um, I often say is, you know, I can teach you what I want to teach you, but I'd rather teach you what you want to learn. So, you know, before I kick off, if you have any questions around, around, I suppose, around money, around uh, financial freedom, around creating wealth, why don't you pop them in the chat box and I'll do whatever I can to, uh, to shed some light on them. If I can't, well, we'll find some answers and, and we'll go from there. So, if it, you know, tonight really we're talking, um, every second Tuesday we talk, uh, we talk about, you know, about wealth, creating wealth, how to move to... How to move to the uh, to the other side of of the cash flow quadrant? Um, those of you that don't know, you know, I'm very privileged. I do a lot of work with uh, um, Robert Kiyosaki, and and uh, over the last sort of 24 months, I've been able to um, work with him, be mentored by him, and teach a number of his his uh, a, a number of his stuff, which is a, a real a real privilege and amazing blessing. And and um, yeah, I just love the way he thinks predominantly because he keeps it simple. And how many of you realize that, that in life, most people, in life, most people are, um, most people are complicating stuff. And you know, those of you that were in the program that, that we did over, the, over Friday and Saturday, um, one of the things that, um, that, I, that Delian spoke about and that I constantly sort of pounded people on in the room is keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. You see, business and 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 business making money, sales is is pretty simple. There's a lot to learn, but it's 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 pretty simple. But we complicate it up here. We complicate it in in our heads. And you know, I, I love working and learning from Robert and the Rich Dad advisors because you know his, his real gift is is simplifying things. How many of you how many of you know what what I'm talking about when I talk about when I talk about simplification? And, uh, and, and, and just keep, keep things, you know, just keep things simple. So, um, you know, today I'm going to talk on, on two things outside of the questions that, that you raise. One is I'm going to talk on, on team and why team is so critical to, uh, to creating wealth. And, you know, just ask you a couple of questions around who's on your team and do you, uh, do you, do you know who's on your team and why is team so important? And then the other thing I'm going to talk on a little bit is about, you know, just a little bit around maybe raising capital. How many of you, how many of you might need to raise capital or want to raise capital? How many of you, you know, might have a business idea, have a business, but you think you need to raise capital to get it going? Just, um, okay. So, so yeah, so why don't why don't I why don't I start with start with the capital one? And um, you know, sometimes some of you that know me that have been in the room in my rooms, you'll know that you know one of the things that I've often said is you don't need money to start a business. And and I'll really I'll stand by that because a lot of people are holding themselves back because they don't have any money. Well, the first lesson is this. If you want to make money, you need to learn how to sell. So the first fundamental in any, for any business, for any entrepreneur, for anyone wanting to create income, create wealth, you have to be able to sell. Raising capital 
is the ability to sell. If you can't sell, you're going to struggle to raise the capital. Does that make sense? And, uh, you need to learn how to sell first up. And a lot of times, you know, some of you might have a really good idea and you can't take it to market because you need money to get it all. That's, I understand that. The question is right now, if you need to raise money, what do you have access to that you can go and sell that allow you to be able to raise that, uh, that allow you to be able to raise that money to start cash flowing what you need to do in your business. So a lot of people get stuck because they think they need to raise capital in order to move forward. At some stage in your business, yes, you need to raise capital. In, in order to scale, you need to raise capital. But there's a number of different ways to raise capital. So one of uh, Robert's rich dad advisors is a, um, is a guy called Darren Wheat. And Darren, Darren really, his skill has, has been his ability to raise capital. And Dar, 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 Darren says this, he says, one thing capital cannot do is turn a failing or struggling business into a strong business. So sometimes I see people that think all I need is more capital. If I throw more capital into my business, my business is going to be successful. And that's not true. You see, in reality, you need to create a strong business with or without capital. So the strength of that business is, is building, is building a, a solid team, is creating a, a solid mission, um, is having clarity on where you need to go, is being able to, if your business is flawed and the profits are just not there, then all the capital can do is allow you to continue operating longer than you could have without it. Is, is that making sense? So, you know, I work with some businesses and they say, oh, I hope I just had more money in my business. No, the more money you throw at it, often the more trouble you get into. So you need to be able to create and turn your business into something that can create profit before you throw a whole lot of, a whole lot of capital at it. Darren says, in these situations, capital gives you the time to waste more of your time and money. So... Whether or not you should be raising capital at all is an important question. It's also a sensitive one because we all, all believe that our business idea is sound or else we wouldn't be putting our own time and money into it. You know, often I'll say to people, can you get out and sell the idea before you raise any capital? Can you, can you get some customers and some buyers to buy into it, to buy into it first? Once you can do that, then... If you need capital, can you go out and raise that capital? Does, does that make sense? Any comments or questions on that so far? No, okay. So if you do have any comments or questions, just fire them in the chat box and we'll work and we'll work through them. So often, you know, people think that very often, you know, in, in any business, the most pressing issue is, is not capital. It's, um, it's, it's other things. It's your ability to sell. It's your ability to build a team. It's your ability to have clarity in what you're doing. It's your ability to take action and take the right action doing, doing the right things to create the right results. But let's talk a little bit about if you need to raise capital if you need to raise capital the first thing is raising capital is just sales that's what it is it's your ability to be able to connect a an idea and a problem to a solution and people will raise cap will 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 invest in and give you money if your idea makes sense so you know i speak to when I speak to people and they tell me they've got this great idea and then I ask them to, to sort of take me through it, I struggle to make sense out of it. And, and what they do is they have a lot of passion that, and they have a lot of, they, you know, they, they, they really get all excited about how great this idea is. But when it comes down to the business side of the business, it, it, it either doesn't make sense or they don't know how to make it make sense because they don't understand numbers. So when it comes to pitching for capital, it's, it predominantly starts off as a numbers game. What are the numbers? What are the numbers you require? What, 
what are the numbers that it will generate. So, you know, if you watch programs like Shark Tank or Dragon's Den, what you'll see, my observation, 90% of the time, one question that always comes up when, when people are pitching is what are your sales? What are your sales numbers? How much have you sold? What are you selling? Where are you selling it? Because people want to know that it's already generating income. So when, when raising capital, you've got to be very clear in how much income does it generate? How much income do you think it's going to generate? What are the expenses and the overheads that it's going to take to get it to where it's at? And what is, what is the uh, return on investment? So it's, it's pretty simple in terms of outlaying where you're at, but it's not that simple when it comes down to being very clear in, uh, in what those numbers are. So, you know, understanding numbers is, is key. So, what, you know, one of the reasons why we run the Awaken Your Financial Genius program, for, for example, is to teach people how to understand numbers, how to work through incomes, in, income expenses, assets, liabilities, how to understand where cash flows. Does it flow in or does it flow out? And at the end of the day, any investor wants to know what is their return on money. If they, if they give you, for every rand they get, what is, what is that return going to be? How much are they going to get back? What is the time base of their return? What is, and then importantly, what is the risk? What is the risk associated with dealing with you? Now, you know, business is an emotional thing. People make bad decisions when it comes to emotion. So when you're pitching, you need to be passionate about it, but you can't get people to buy in on emotion. You got to get people, people will buy in on logic and then they will connect to you based on emotion, based on your passion, based on your work ethic, based on, you know, how much you, you, you believe in, in the program. But first up, it's going to come down to what is, what do the numbers tell you? So you've got to be clear on those numbers. You know, I, I spend time speaking to people about raising money for their business. And the first thing I'll ask them is, what are your numbers? And they can't tell me the numbers, but they'll tell me it's a great idea and it's going to make tons of money. And I'll, and then I'll say to them, okay, good, good. How tell me what is, what is the plan? You know, so in the last sales call, we talked about, we talked about numbers. So you've got to take the numbers in, in your business plan. You've got to take the numbers in your, in your sales funnel and you've got to transfer those into the numbers for an investor. So if they give you, if you raise a million rand, what do you need? First up, what do you need the million rand to do? How is that million rand going to create increase in income in the business? How is that million rand going to allow you to be able to put more customers in the business in order to generate a higher level of income, in order to manage your expenses, in order to increase who's on your team, in order to create a bigger return um, coming out the bottom? And then how are they going to get their money returned and what's the guarantee that mitigates the risk? that allows them to be able to, uh, to be able to invest in you. So raising capital at the end of the day is a sale. Can you sell to somebody else while they need to, while, while they need to part with money to invest in you to create, to create an opportunity. Now, the other thing about sort of investment and, and creating a return on investment is you have to be realistic. You know, a lot of times I hear people and, and I watch things like, like Shark Tank, for example, where people will pitch and they'll, and one, they'll, they'll way overestimate the value of their business, you know, and, that, and that's an emotional perceived sort of value on what they perceive and think based on emotion. You, you've, got to be, you've got to be realistic. Two, depending on how badly you need the capital is dependent on how much equity, if any, you're, you're prepared to let go because there's many ways to structure a deal. So best way to structure a deal is to sit down with people who understand how to structure deals and then learn how to put the numbers forward so you can pitch those numbers. When you're pitching for money, make it clear to the point, understand what you do. And importantly, if you're going to raise capital, practice, 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 and practice, create a pitch, understand your numbers, practice, role play, practice again, role play so that you are prepared role play the objections that'll come up role play the questions that'll come up so that when you sit down you are absolutely absolutely prepared to raise capital but i'll say it again raising capital is the ability to sell if you want to if you can sell you can raise capital if you can't sell you'll struggle 
to, uh, to raise capital. And then I'll take you back to what Darren said. One thing capital cannot do is turn a failing business into a strong business. If your business is flawed and the profits are just not there, then all capital can do is allow you to continue operating longer than you could have without it. So if you're looking at, cap at, at having capital to save your business, it's probably the wrong decision. What you need to do is look at your business to save your business. And, and that would be looking at things like sales, team, how to create income, what products do you need to sell, where can you generate income, what are the activities that you're doing in, in, in order to create results. So any, any questions or comments so far on this little piece around raising, raising capital? Any, anything come up? Any ahas? Any moments of clarity? Any moments of confusion? You know, either unmic yourself and ask me a question or, um, or just uh, type into the, into the question box or the comment box. So, you know, those of you that know me, I love to be, yeah, so David, how to, how to close deals. Well, if you are raising capital, if you are, if you are raising capital, then, uh, then that would be closing a deal. And, and in order to close deals, the client or the investor has got to see value and it's got to be value in terms of a re return on investment. So you might have you might have a uh, a bright idea. So Tandy Lynn, um, I'm not going to talk on bright marketing ideas tonight. And uh, ho however, there yeah, there's there's many ideas. The question is, I instead of marketing, are you can you be focused on selling? You know, so um, one of our one of our trainers, um, Delian Delian, there's a lot of work around around marketing, and. Again, marketing is about keeping it simple. What's the message? What's the message that you need to get to your clients that will attract your clients? You know, I think one thing that I see in marketing, a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to, trying to be really, really smart and really, really clever. And, and that's great. And yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the question is, what are the questions your clients are really asking themselves? What are the problems that they really have? If you can address those problems in your marketing, you can uh, you can create you, you can you'll create a connection. So so hopefully that sheds a little bit of light on that. Giselle, so um, Giselle says knowing the numbers, hundred percent. So two key components. You've got to know the numbers. Business is about numbers. Business is a numbers game. Financial becoming financially free, financial financial wealth, creating wealth, making money is all about numbers. Too few people understand understand numbers. I work with accountants that don't understand numbers. They understand the format of accounting, but they don't understand the numbers when it comes to driving a business. So that's a key component that you've got to understand is what generates the income. What generates the income? What takes money out? What puts money in the business? What takes money out of the business? What are your key liabilities? And what is it that is going to create a return on investment? So Giselle, correct. Knowing the numbers is key. My question to all of you, what are you doing to really understand, understand numbers? So still, to everyone, what is my view on passive gained income? Well, so still, my view on passive gained income is do you want to be free or do you want to work for the rest of your life? So pa passive income really is, is, is asset-based income and is, is generating asset-based income. So your question is any pros or cons in regards towards reinvestment in a business, a little bit unclear on what you say in regards towards reinvestment in a business. It again, it'll go back to what Giselle says. It's, no, it's knowing the numbers. The question is, if you're going to invest in any business, do you understand the numbers? What is it going to cost to invest? What is the return on investment? How do you mitigate your risk in terms of any investment that you're going to put in? And if if you if you if you had to put a hundred thousand rand into a business. And you, had a, and you could put 100,000 Rand into, let's say you had two opportunities, opportunity A and opportunity B. Well, the decision to put into either opportunity often has got to come down, if you're an investor, it comes down to what's your return, return on investment, if, if that makes sense. So, so pa passive, income, passive income is gained by, by building and creating assets. So um, different types of assets, for really four different asset classes. One is property, two is business, three is, is, um, is paper, 
things like stocks, shares, bonds, that, that type of stuff. And the fourth one is commodities. Now, they all give different returns. They all give different types of passive income. You know, the one thing that I've learned from Robert is whatever, whatever investments you want to go into, make sure that you're studying the investment you're going into. And a lot of people think, oh, if I just put some money in this, I'm going to become rich overnight. No, whether it's, whether it's a network marketing business or investing in gold, or was it investing in cryptocurrency or investing in property, you need to be a student of what you're going to invest in. Look, it's pretty simple. If you don't know what you do with your money and where to put your money, as Robert says, somebody else does. So, so you know, the key component is this. Can you become a student of what you're going to make, of what you're going to use your money for? You know, uh, for the last decade plus, I've been a student as an entrepreneur. I've been a student of building businesses from the ground up, you know, building businesses, making mistakes, learning how to earn money, learning how to create cash flow in those businesses in order to allow those businesses to grow. So, so that's one of, my, one of the reasons why I love teaching, training, and building entrepreneurs because I've spent a decade learning how to, how to build and grow my own businesses from nothing, from no capital, from, from being able to sell, to generate income, to turn that income into something else, to be able to make it work. Now that, now that, I'm, that, that, that I've learned how to do that, by no means have I mastered it, but now that I've learned how to do that, I'm learning how to take the cash that I generate out of that and put it into different assets. However, before I part with any money, I am studying the things that I'm going to put it into. So right now I'm studying, I'm studying commodities, gold, pr predominantly gold. And the other thing that I'm really studying is property. Where would I invest in property? How would I invest in property? What are the, what are the key properties? But before I start parting with any money and listening to people, what I do is surround myself with people like the Rich Dad Advisors that I learn from by listening to what they teach, reading their books and that sort of stuff, and starting to, starting to, uh, starting to learn. Does, does, that, does that make sense? So, you know, in terms of that, I'll just find it over here. You know, it's just, um, it's around, around, around education. And yeah, I'll put this note. Um, so, you know, how, how are you, how are you educating yourself? And, and what are you, what are you doing to, to create that form of education? So, you know, keep, keep studying. Yeah. So, Education, it, is it what you learn versus what you remember? So a lot of people are studying based on what they can learn versus rather than, you know, which is important rather than, you know, often the school system teaches us that education is what we can remember. You know, how many of you, how many of you try to remember stuff, but you haven't learned it? Okay, so, you know, still when it comes to passive income, it's a journey of, of study and of learning and, and I'm studying the things that are going to create results from you. Does, does that make sense? So, Cargello says, I just realized that my business has to be self-sustainable. Selling is the only way to keep running. Cargello is now speaking my language, dude. Yes, if you can get up and you can make sure that that business is generating income on its own without having to go out and find someone. I, I look at way too many people that are saying, I'm struggling because no one will give me money for my business. And the reality is this get up, get out and sell. Because if you can get up and you can get out and sell, you can generate income. The core fundamental of any business is your ability to sell. You know, Robert says this, you cannot have a business unless you can sell. So the first step is get out and sell. So you got it. That can, it does your business have a product or service that you get out, that you sell, that generates an income, that turns an income. When you have that, then you can go out to people and say, this is what I've been able to do. This is what I've been able to create. And because of this, I'm now looking for investors for partners. But the, what, in my experience, in my own businesses, this is what I've found. Is once I'm selling, I use the money that I'm creating and the income to reinvest in my business, to be able to sell other things, and my business starts growing. And yes, there's times as it starts growing that you might need to create some investment in order to maybe do some capital investment to create. But remember this. And I said it on, on the finance call a couple of weeks ago. Whenever you create a liability, now raising capital often is a liability because it's debt. So whenever you raise liability, that liability must generate an asset. That liability must generate an asset. So when you create debt, 
it must turn into an asset that generates cash flow and and income. Does that does that make sense? So um, yeah, Samantha, it's about keeping it simple. The simpler you keep it, the more focused you can get, the more you know what to do. So Isaac says, isn't it important to disclose other companies, disclose other companies when bidding? Isaac, not 100% sure of what you mean on, on disclosing other companies when, uh, when bidding. You'll have to share a little bit more clarity for me on that. To Leon says, clarity in terms of focusing on sales and business. Raise capital when the need arises to expand and the time is right. Yeah, De Leon, yes. But sadly, I think what a lot of people do is think they need to, and I, and I think I said it just now, think they need to raise capital in order to expand and often because they're not outselling. And I think, you know, knowing you, you you've learned over the, over the last six months that the ability to generate money into a business, it, it comes from selling. And the more you focus on selling, the more you, you raise your own capital, then you have no debt because you've raised it as income. There's no liability. So, um, so it runs from there. So Giselle, what course do I offer for you to teach us numbers? Um, sales explosion, the sales and leadership mastery program teaches numbers. I do a one day course that's coming up, which is around, uh, around driving a, a, which is around learning how to set up a, a sales funnel and a sales strategy, which predominantly is about numbers. And, uh, yeah, if you go onto my website, there's a, uh, there's a couple of, past webinars that I've done around numbers that you can, that you can learn. Um, and, and then, you know, uh, awaken your financial genius is a 10 week program that I teach, uh, which I developed, um, with Robert, which is, um, which is really around, um, which is really around understanding, understanding numbers, understanding financial statements. And, uh, we have a preview coming up, which is a, a sort of three hour session in, in Joburg coming up. Marlon, I think, um, I don't know, 13th, is it 13th of October? It was 13th of October, but I, I'm probably going to have to change that because um, today I was asked to go to Bangkok for an event. So, um, but it'll, it'll, be, it'll be... Sales and Leadership Mastery, Barry? No, the, uh, the Awaken Your Financial Genius to Play the Money Game. 13th of October. But um, just those of you that have booked for it, we, we'll, we're going to change it um, because, yeah, I just found out today I have to go to, to Bangkok. So, so you, Giselle, all those courses will teach you, teach you how to understand numbers. You just got to start with the, with the basic numbers. So let me find Wiseman. Uh, there's Wiseman. Wiseman, do you want to say something? If you uh, unmute yourself and come in. Okay, so you just had your hands very Four million investors inside a money market. Could that become a problem when taking a risk in investment on active working businesses? Wiseman, you got to you got to do the numbers when it comes to that. Whenever whenever you move money, whenever you invest, there's a risk. What is the risk? Do you understand the risk? How can you mitigate the risk? Do you understand the environment that you're going to be putting it into? So the money market is is a very safe risk-free investment, but the return on investment is very low. So I don't know, typically inside the money market, what well, we get anywhere between five and 7%. Okay, so it's, so it's low. The question is, if you, uh, could you take some of that money, put it in something else and, and create a higher return? Uh, potentially, yes, depending on where you're gonna put it. So again, depending on what active working business, depending on, on what is your skill in, in working, in working businesses, you know? So, um, I just speak for myself. Could I take, if I took 2 million Rand, could I take 2 million Rand and invest it in a business and double it in the next 12 months? Yeah, I, I think I could because why not is I understand, I understand sales, I understand how to generate income, understand, you know, how to create leverage, but not in any business in, in, in some businesses, no, in other businesses yet. So I have to understand the business that I'm going to invest in and what that return is. Is it, is it for a short term gain? Is it for a long term gain? You know, there's certain businesses that you, you could take money out. You could put it into, into a, give it to a, a business owner. For example, 
um, is just say you met someone who who had a had a deal on the table, but they didn't have any money to go buy stock. So 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 they had secure an order, but they don't have money to buy stock. And let's say their gross profit on on the deal is fifty percent. Well, what you could do is you could go and say, okay, I tell you what, I will fund the deal. I will take. Maybe you have to mitigate the deal based on the contracts, the agreements, all those type of things. But you could take that income. You could fund the deal, buy the stock, supply the stock, and you can make yourself 20 or 30% on that money. That, that, does that make sense? But it, it all comes down to, down to your ability to, to mitigate the risk and understand, understand the risk, understand the deal and go from there. And again, you know, um, when, when you're investing in anything, you can never do a good deal with a bad partner and it's hard to do a bad deal with a good partner if that makes sense. So, so again, it's, it's who you're dealing with. What, are, what, what do they understand about business? What is their track record? And it's not just an opportunity. You know, a lot of people go, Hey, I've got this amazing opportunity. And if you just give me a million rand, we're going to make tons. Um, not really that, that comes down to emotion. And when you listen to the guys like Warren Buffett, Buffett says, never make a business investment decision based on, uh, based on emotion. So, um, hopefully that makes sense still. Um, so let's have a look. Fran making so much education and surrounding yourself with the right people. Yeah, hundred percent. Actual investing in myself is important. Clear. Yes, David, the single most important investment outside of investing in your business and money, the single most important investment that we can make is we can make in ourselves. Too few people do not invest in themselves. You know, I was, um, I was, in, I was in a training program in, in, for a corporate company today. It's, it's not an area I spend a lot of time in. I have a few, um, select corporate clients that I work with, but what I what what I do understand when I go into that world, very few employees invest in themselves. Very few. They they're waiting for their boss or their business or the company to invest in them. I, I just I know that as an entrepreneur, I'm in charge of my own future, and the more I invest in myself, the bigger the return I'm I'm going to get. You know, so you you'll never be able to play a game bigger than yourself. So the size of your mind, the size of your being, the size of the little voice that you can overcome will depend, it will, will determine the size of the game you can play. And few, too, few, few people, not enough people are investing in changing, in changing themselves in, in personal development. You know, so, so that is a great investment. And then what is the return on, on that investment? So Steel says, do you have any advice on tapping into the international sales market? So still, one of the things that we don't do is we don't give advice. You know, I've just learned from Robert is our role is to teach, not to give advice. What we can do is, you know, is, is, is we teach concepts. We, 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 teach, we teach concepts. And, you know, so a lot of people will come to Robert. You know, I've been in seminars with him and he, he comes off stage and people come and say, hey, Robert, give me your advice. Would you buy gold or silver right now? He will not tell them. What he will do is you go, you go study, you go understand it. And then you make the decision yourself because you need to make the decision based on what you understand and what you're prepared to learn, not the advice. Too many people want to be told what to do. And, uh, and so tell me what to do and I'll go do it. But when it doesn't work, they're very quick to come and blame. You know, the reality is this, what, what passions do you have? What do you love? What do you enjoy? What, what are you going to get involved in? That's, you know, that's why, most of my investing for the last decade has been in businesses because I just love building businesses. I'm an entrepreneur. I love entrepreneurship. I love training. I love entrepreneurship. I love people. So my investment goes into businesses and people. Now it's moving, not moving out of businesses and people, but with the cash flow that I create, I'm starting to learn and, uh, and move into, into different realms of investment. If, if that makes sense. So, you know, when you say tapping it in on the international sales market, you know, for me, still, those people that know me know that sales is sales. doesn't matter what you sell, where you sell. But in, in terms of, you know, creating leverage, do you mean creating leverage overseas? Well, you know, part of building a business bigger than yourself is creating leverage. You know, outside of your hometown, outside of your home region, outside of your home province, outside of your home country. So, so it's about creating, it's about creating Leverage. Isaac says, disclosing in a sense of making them as reference, like I did clearing and for. Yeah, so those are those are testimonials, Isaac. You know, it's those are testimonials. Those create credibility. 
So, you know, when, when working with people, when trying to, to, uh, to sell, to raise capital, those type of things, people like to know who you've done business with before. Now, I, I, you know, a, I, I'll say something around that. Never bullshit. Okay, I'll say it again. Never bullshit. Always tell the truth. If you've done a little deal with Coca-Cola, then say it. You know, I've done a little bit of business with Coca-Cola. Boom. Don't, you know, so because people have a habit of finding stuff out. And um, so just whatever it is, be authentic and honest in your dealings. You know, if you, um, so, you know, for the last, I, I've been in and around Robert Kiyosaki for the last 12 years through Blair Singer. But yes, I've met Robert. Yes, I've been in a boardroom or two with Robert. Yes, I've, I, you know, I've been on a, a stage with Robert in, a, in, in, in the same event, that sort of thing. But only really in the last 24 months have I really started doing any direct work with Robert. So you would never have heard me three years ago, four years ago saying, hey, I work with Robert Kiyosaki because I did it. But what I would say is I work with Blair Singer, who's my mentor and business partner, who's a rich dad advisor to Robert Kiyosaki. And I've had the opportunity of, uh, of, of meeting Robert and, and selling some of Robert's products. That was what I said. Now with the work I do in Awaken Your Financial Genius, I have the opportunity of saying, you know, recently I've been able to work directly with Robert, learn from him and have, have, have him as a mentor because that's the truth. So, so whatever you use in terms of creating credibility, just make sure it's the truth. It, it comes out. Does that make sense? So Giselle, uh, Awaken Your Financial Genius session. It's 10 weeks. The next one starts end of January. Um, but Mari has already put up, man, she's efficient. There's the details for you. Play the money game. And uh, I will confirm the date. It has been scheduled to the 13th. And uh, I know that Mari is shaking her head going, not again. But, uh, but I, yeah, I've been, uh, been asked to go and speak at an event and be part of an event in Bangkok over, over a weekend. So, so, um, so we will confirm those dates pretty soon this, this week. So... Irishan says, how do you choose a good partner? What do you look for in a person? Irishan, that, that is a great question. So that takes me to, that takes me really to what I want to talk, well, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about tonight, and that is who's on your team? So, you know, a partner becomes a team member. So the question is, who is on your team? So I'm gonna I'm gonna share my boom, boom. I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna go to here. Okay, can you guys all see that? Just uh, in the chat box, do me a favor, just type in if you can see that okay. One or two of you. Yes, Barry. Okay, cool, thanks. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, the question is, when you was on your team, and, and uh, Robert and the Rich Dad Advisors recently launched a book called More Important Than Money. And really what they talk about is what's way more important than money is who is, who is on your team. So, you know, recently in, uh, in a program that, that I'm training on through uh, Coca-Cola, it's an entrepreneurial supply and development program. I did a, uh, I, I did a, a, a three days program called entrepreneurial foundational program. And, you know, those of you that are on that Coke program are on tonight, you know, will know what I'm talking about. And this will be a great refresher, but essentially, a key component of building a business is who is on your team. So just, you know, just to kick off, I, what, I, what I went to is an entrepreneur is a person who organizes, operates, and assumes the risk for a business venture. And in Robert's words, he says, entrepreneurs create products to make the world a better place, not to rip people off. And I thought that was really key when it comes to being an entrepreneur. You know, the first step is, can you organize? Not are you highly organized, but can you organize? Can you organize people? Can you organize resources? 
Can you pull stuff together? That's, that comes the ability to organize. How many of you know people that are, that are, that are actually? So great entrepreneurs know how to organize. They know how to organize resources. They know how to organize assets. They know how to organize money. They know how to organize people. They know how to organize opportunity. Secondly, they know how to operate. Operate, to be an operator is about taking action. You know, a lot of people organize, spend a lot of time organizing, but don't operate. They don't get out and take action. So a good entrepreneur organizes and operates and importantly assumes the risk. How many of you know people that make a lot of money and, are, and you would turn them to be great operators? Man, that guy's a good operator. He, you know, he's involved in things, he's organizing, but he's, he's moving. Now, I, I, I don't call it hustling, I don't call it wheeling and dealing, I call it operating. He, he's, he or she is on the go. They're taking action. You, you know, you watch them, they always are doing something. And, and then thirdly, they assume the risk for a business venture. They assume the risk. They stand up. They are responsible for the risk. When they raise capital, they take responsibility for the risk. When they go out and sell, they take responsibility for the risk. And when I saw that definition in the dictionary, I thought it was very powerful. And, uh, and you know, essentially when you're building a business, when you're creating wealth, can you organize, can you operate, and can you assume the risk? And, you know, and I love this piece that Robert says, entrepreneurs create products to make the world a better place, not to rip people off. And that goes in line with this saying that says, that says, um, that, 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 you know, that, that says it is about, you can either make money or you can make sense. And, and if you focus on making sense, your byproduct will be you will make money. But if you only focus on making money, often you'll lose making sense. You'll lose customers and you'll do it at the expense of, of customers. So when we look at an entrepreneur, you know, Robert teaches his BI triangle. And this for me is a key component to building any business. This is a key component to becoming a business owner and an investor. So when you move from, this, from the S quadrant into the B and the I quadrant. That's really what this is. That's why it's called the BI triangle, the business investor triangle. Now, what holds the triangle together are three core components. One, team. Who is on your team? You cannot grow a business unless you build a team. You know, so, so you've got to be able to build a team. So who's on your team? The first and most important person on your team is your bookkeeper. Now, just now, I was reading in the chat box that who asked the question? Somebody asked the question. Uh, Giselle asked the question, find the right partner, like Candice of the last event, who can understand my media business, advise on how to pay the least tax and grow my business. Well, the first thing is, is you've got to understand what you're looking for. You know, Tom Wheelwright says when he, when he talks about buying a tax advisor, he says this. He says, um, yeah, he says, hire the right tax advisor. This doesn't just require knowing the right questions to ask a potential tax advisor. It means knowing what questions your tax advisor should be asking you. So that means starting to study. What are the things that you need to know? Don't worry about what questions you should ask your tax advisor. If you have to ask the questions, then you simply have the wrong advisor. So good advisors should be asking you the right questions. Okay? If you have to ask the questions, then you simply have the wrong. I mean, you know, I, I have a really great accountant. She is really good. She understands what we do, she understands our business. Not only does she understand our business, but she's prepared to study and learn the stuff that we learn. So she sits on our webinars. She comes to my events. She's been on our Awaken Your Financial Genius program. She brought her husband on her financial genius program. She thinks she acts like us and she under, she's part of our team. Does that, does that make sense? So she's an accountant. She has a bookkeeper and she drives accountability around numbers. And she asks me the right questions around my numbers. I don't have to chase her. She's chasing me. She chases me and Nicole. Where are your numbers? Where are your expenses? Where are this? She's chasing me. 
you know, my previous bookkeeper, a great guy, really enjoyed him, really, you know, a friend of ours, but he just didn't chase us. He didn't ask the questions. I was forever chasing him. I went out on, a, on an event a, a while ago in, in, in Phoenix with Robert. One of the first things Robert taught was on team, the most important person is your bookkeeper. He says, if you have financial problems, if you don't have any numbers, you've got to change your bookkeeper. Boom, there and then in that event, I made a decision to find the right partner as a bookkeeper. I got a, the right bookkeeper, the right accountant, and dramatically, things have, things have changed financially. So, so you've got to go out and look for the right person. Sometimes you'll go through a few wrong people to find, to find the right person. Legally, who's, who's on your team legally? Who's advising you about the contracts and the deals that you're taking? You know, sadly, what I see with a lot of small to medium-sized business owners is they scrimp and save when it comes to when it comes to accounting and when it comes to legal. You know, small business owners, not accountants, they start and they do their own business. They they do their own books, or they get their wife to do their own books. I've fallen into that trap for my wife to do my own book. She's not a bookkeeper, not an accountant. Just didn't work. So you know, when it comes to money, the worst things that we argue about is money. People lie about money. So find the right person who will hold you accountable to, uh, to, to that sort of stuff. Does, does that make, make sense? So when it comes to the BI triangle, first thing, who's on your team? Are you clear on who you need, what you need, and how you're going to be able to build your team as your business grows? The second pillar is leadership. What are your pillars of leadership? Are you learning to become a leader? Great leaders teach, they don't tell. Are you becoming a teacher or are you becoming a dictator? Can you lead? Can you lead people? Do you have a vision? Okay. And the third pillar is mission. What is your mission? People connect to mission. You know, the, uh, the rich dad mission is to elevate the financial well-being of the world. Okay. So it's to, it's to elevate the financial well-being of the world. And, uh, and that is a mission. Now, I connected to that mission. I also connected to Blair Singer's mission, which is to, uh, to change the marketplace by teaching and training cha uh, trainers. And then I have our own Uncovering Greatness mission, which is to build a million entrepreneurs in Africa, sustainable entrepreneurs in Africa over the next decade by building and training competent teachers who teach, not tell. So we, ha we, we have a mission. And the people that come into our realms, into our environment, connect with us based on our mission. The people that don't come into our realm and into our environment don't connect to us. They leave us because they just don't connect to our mission. Is that wrong? No. Is it? Is it uh, so does that make sense? So just a quick question. Are you guys getting the sound of this okay? Does someone just tell me sound okay, Marlon? You hearing this good? Uh, yes, Barry. It just oh, the 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 sound does break up, but yeah, getting everything. Okay, okay. So it'll break up. That's probably a little bit around um, around around the internet. So okay, good. So then, what goes inside? Well, five key pieces: one, product; two, legal; three, systems; four, communications. Five cash flow. Now, anyone notice what the smallest thing is? Product. Where do most people focus their attention on? Product. Least important thing is product. The most important thing is cash flow. What are you doing in your business to generate cash flow? Where's the cash flow? Is it flowing in? Is it flowing out? Is it flowing regularly? Is it flowing sporadically? The second thing from cash flow is communications. Another word for communications is sales. How well do you communicate? What is your system of communication? How well do you sell? Because sales is, is the most essential component of any business because when you sell, you generate income. When you generate income, you generate cash flow. Third, what systems do you put in place? Do you have the systems? Do your team understand the systems? Have you communicated your systems to the team? Have they bought into the systems? Do you hold people accountable to the systems? Do you hold yourself accountable to the systems? Fifth is legal. Where do you sit legally? 
What are the laws that are creating money? Those of you that have spent any time around Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Advisors, you'll know that Robert teaches this. Do it legally, ethically, and morally. Follow the rules. There's rules, there's laws. Do it by the law. Understand what your, what your legal requirements are. Get out, understand the laws, and do it by the law. It'll save you a lot of heartache in the future. It'll save you a lot of sleepless nights. And then lastly, at the top of the pyramid, the smallest piece is product. And you get all those things right, and you get your product right, because who is on your team? And as you go forward, what is your team becoming? So I'll just give you a little overview here on, on oh, I'll give you a little overview here on my team. So if you just, if you look at my team, you know, I have really, I have four, uh, now five key people that, um, that are involved in, in, uh, in the Uncovering Greatness team on a pretty permanent, on a pretty permanent basis. You know, myself and my, and, and my wife, we're, we're full-time in our business doing various different things um, around training. And, uh, and, then, and then we have, we have a couple of people that work permanently in our business. Um, I, I have a PA and we have um, a young guy in our business who, who is learning how to sell, does tele sales and, and all that sort of stuff. Then, you know, we, we have, um, we have, uh, we have um, Marlon and, and Mari who are part of the Uncovering Greatness team. They own their own businesses, but they're part of the team and, uh, and provide, provide services that, that we can run and, and essentially provide services that Nicole and I don't do. So, you know, our goal is to connect ourselves and surround ourselves with people that have skills, knowledge in areas that we don't have skill and knowledge and find the best people to do those type of things. All of them are connected to the mission. All of them stick around and stay around because of the mission we are on about teaching, leading, and, and growing people. Then I am an accountant, a full-time accountant bookkeeper. When I say full-time, she works, she runs her own business. She's on the team. She understands our mission. She's part of our mission. And she's part of, part of our, my leadership team in, in my business when it comes to finance and money. I have some partners. For example, Blessing and Trading Academy. I'm a company called Procure Sense in some of the deals we do. So those are, those are, are specific partners who are part areas of business that, that we are working on. Um, I have mentors on my team, Blessinger and Robert Kiyosaki. So those are my mentors on my team. Our mission, I've talked about the Uncovering Greatness, the Blessinger Training Academy, and the Rich Dad Mission. We have clarity in our, in our mission. Product. I have a range of products from training to consulting to coaching. Various products, clear in the products that we do, generate different things, need different people to be able to facilitate and make them happen. And when it comes to sales and communication, who's on our sales team? You know, people focused on seller, selling, generating, generating sales, communicating to the market, communicating to our customers, and creating cash flow. Who manages our cash flow between myself and, uh, and my accounting team? On your team. Who's on your team and who do you need to get on your team? Does, does that make sense? Because when you go through that and you start understanding that, that's when you start growing the game. That's why Robert wrote this book. This book is more important than money. And he says, more important than money is an entrepreneur's team. Now, I don't expect you if you have a small business, he's just starting out just to suddenly have this team tomorrow. But can you start thinking around what are you going to need? Who are you going to need? Who do you partner with? Who can you work with right now? Who can you bring in that can, who, who can start working and helping you on the, on, the, uh, on the opportunity of growing? You know, both Mari and Marlon have been around us for a long time. And for a long time, it was, it, they worked around us on the opportunity of growing. Would, would that be fair to say, Mari and Marlon, if you guys want to comment on being on the team? 
and and over a period of time as we grew, they grew, and uh, and now hopefully it's starting to create a little bit of financial viability for them. Does, does that make sense? So still, in regards to your comment, I don't hire people on CV. I hire people on attitude and mindset. Once I look at attitude and mindset, then I'll look at CV. But for me, I'm looking for the people that think like us, act like us. I can teach skills. I can teach skills. I can't teach attitude and mindset. So, you know, yes, people have to have, so like my accountant, does she have to be an accountant? Yes. Does she have to understand? Yes. But the very first test I gave her was I'm running an event called Awaken Your Financial Genius. I'd like you to be on it. Come on the program, invest in it. And, uh, and, and once I knew that she was prepared to invest in what we do, then I knew she had the right attitude. And she came on the program. It's a thousand US dollar program for 10 weeks. She invested, she paid, she was on the program. She did the whole thing. She came back, she brought her husband at the next one. She has the right attitude, the right, she, she, she understands what we do and she's prepared to put herself in that environment. My previous accountant never came to an event that I did, didn't know what I did. Different attitude, does that make sense? Both accountants, both highly skilled, different, different le level of attitude. So, you know, the other thing that, and, and we talk about it in, uh, in, in the sales and leadership mastery program that I teach, Sales Explosion, is how to build a code of honor, the right context that allows you to attract the right team. So, so Mario and Marlon, you guys want to comment on what I said about a team? Coming, being part of the team, being part of the mission, uh, serving, and maybe, you know, creating growth over a period of time, but being connected to the mission. Oh, yeah. Um, for me, for me, um, I, after understanding your, the way you work, the rules in which you work, I think it fascinated me quite a lot because there was a lot of structure around it. Initially, I found it very difficult to operate in because in my model of the world was different. But when I started to see how well it works together, that, that holding that code of honor allows us to think the same and move the same. That's when it really caught me on. And, and, and then I'm like, okay, yes, I, I can easily, I can easily fit into this and I can easily duplicate this as opposed to sort of, cause my behavior is kind of like whatever, but being in that structure was so important and, and having to, to still learn and still grow myself within that was really most important. So, and, and with the whole idea, we connected with the whole surf first and that's what keeps me coming back. Excellent. Thank you. This is starting to pay dividends. Most definitely. I mean, after, I think that, I think with, with our debrief of the last event, one of the big, feedback uh, the feedback concepts was code of honor and context and i took that back to my team and it really just changed the 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 the, the feeling and the demeanor of all the staff because up until then i was really struggling but when when we like we, we hashed it out and i experienced it in the room taking it back was so much easier and then implementing it was also so much easier it just brought us all together Excellent. Is it starting to make financial sense for you now? Definitely. Okay, good. It didn't in the beginning, did it? No. Yeah. So how many of you are prepared to serve? Connect to a mission, serve, and create a result down the line. Thanks, Marlon. Mari, any comments around that? Mari? Thanks, any Barry. Um, yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I think it was very clear when we first started working uh, with you that we had to serve first. And um, I mean, it was quite easy in the beginning, obviously, to, to serve in the rooms and um, just to get clear on the mission and the code of honor. Um, and it was, you, you were very clear and precise with that. Um, and you were very clear on what it is that you expected, uh, you know, in the team members that work with you. Um, and I think serving first just for me was, was a no-brainer. Um, it's, it's part of what I love doing. Um, and then from there, just getting very clear on the code of honor and just seeing how 
how it works in your business and how I can take it um, into all the other projects that I work on. Um, and on many occasions, I work with teams that I literally, I'll get to know them two or three days before an event. Um, and I'm very precise and very uh, deliberate with creating a code of honor for the teams that I work with. And I give everyone the opportunity to opt out and to not work with me if they see that um, they're not willing to, to play by the same rules and to, to fit the mission. Um, and that's all because we've worked with you. So just, you know, being very clear on what is the expectation and, um, you know, you never, you've never compromised on your mission and your code of honor. And, uh, we've always, you know, like, well, I can speak for myself. Um, you know, we, we need to learn and grow and I've need, I've had to learn and grow in the process in order to really make sure that I can work on your mission and just be absolutely clear on how I can serve you on your mission. Cool, thanks. Have we seen people come and go? Oh, yes, 100%. So many. <laughs> yeah. Have we? Yeah, and a lot of times, are they wrong? Or do they no, just not finish the mission? 100%. They, they're not wrong. They're just, you know, just it might not be the right place for them right now. Um, or they're just not 100% clear on, on the mission as it is right now. 100%. And is it starting to make more financial sense? Oh, a hundred percent. And um, a lot of, I mean, like Marlon mentioned this past weekend, sitting in the debrief, there were so many aha moments for me um, during your event where I know in other areas that I've worked in, I go, oh, wait, now I understand why that didn't work. And it's only because I'm really in your room and in your space and part of your team. So it, it, it gives me that opportunity to really reflect on what's working, what's not working when I'm, you know, working on the Uncovering Greatness team as well as, you know, all the other teams that I work on. Excellent. So there's a, there's a word from Josh Lannon in this, uh, Joshua from Tom uh, well, It is from, it is from Tom Wheelwright and Tom says this, the lesson I learned from this was that as long as we are driven by our mission, whatever it may be, we don't ever need to fear rejection or failure. Our mission isn't about us. It's about the people we serve. When you serve in the right way with the right mission, you'll create the right results down the line. So when it goes back to the BI triangle, who's on your team? What is your mission? How are you leading them? And how are you creating the future structure so that you can create strength? When you're investing, who's on your team? Who's advising you? Who's giving you the advice you need? You know, seek advice from the people that know what they're doing, from the people that have done what you're looking for. Don't just seek advice. Too many people are asking the wrong people for advice. And then on the other hand, too many people are asking for the wrong advice. They're asking to be told rather than what do I need to learn? Great mentors, great coaches, just ask questions so that you can figure it out, so that you can understand what you need to do. And you get it, that's when you truly learn. So, yeah, any, any final questions or comments? So just for those of you that are, that are interested, we've got a couple of events coming up. We have um, a, a sales and leadership mastery preview coming up this, uh, this boom, when? Next, Wednesday, next Wednesday, next Wednesday morning, next Wednesday morning um, in The in Nickel Bedford. Hotel. <laughs> so uh so we have that i was just thinking where i am in terms of time because i have an event tomorrow then i go to botswana then to zimbabwe and back tuesday night for wednesday so so wednesday the 26th we have a sales and leadership mastery preview at the nickel hotel in bedford review it's a it's a free event um or oh, it's 150 rand and you get a copy of my book when you get to the get to the event that's up to you and uh and really it's just an overview of of uh it's two and a half hours of training you will get value out of it and it'll give you an idea of what our sales and leadership mastery course is, which is happening 18th, 19th and 20th of October in, uh, in Joburg. So, um, yeah, if you haven't done the sales and leadership mastery course, then I'm going to encourage you, you know, come on that. It, it's a great event. It will dramatically change, change who you are, where you're at and how you do business. And then we'll, uh, we'll let you know when the, Next Awaken Your Financial Genius course uh, preview is, it'll be about a three-hour event 
and uh, and that'll be pretty soon, early in October, um, and uh, and then um, and then we'll go from there. Steel says, when can I invite you for a meeting in Namibia? I have a ton of people who'd love to attend, but you never. Uh, Steel, I never reply to emails. That's why I now have a PA. It's not an excuse. It's just I'm useless at that. Um, please do me a favor. Send me another. Send me another email. My sincere apologies. Send me an email. I will pass it on to her, and she will set up some time, um, and then we can discuss how we can how we can make it how we can make it work. Um, and I will let you know how I'm making Botswana work. I'm off to Botswana on Thursday to do a two day event with 50 people there, and uh, and and we can go from there. So. Uh, um, yeah, Milka, the same thing. I was in um, I was in Nairobi uh, two months ago. Did a sales and leadership mastery program there. Um, and again, yeah, if um, it, you know, looking for the right partners, the right people that are prepared to do what's needed to be done to to make it happen. So those of you in Joburg or around South Africa, you know, 18th, 19th, 20th of October, come and join us for the sales and leadership mastery program. Come to our next Play Your Money Game or Waking Your Financial Genius preview, and that will give you a really good overview of what the 10-week program is that I worked on with, uh, with Robert Kiyosaki. And if you come in October and you decide that you're going to join our Waking Your Financial Genius program, there might be some extra surprises that will come, come out of that. How many of you wouldn't mind getting into a small room with Robert Kiyosaki to, uh, to, really, to really learn from him? Um, if you could get into a room with about 150 to 200 people, how many of you think, man, that would be worth it? Okay, good. So, um, so some of you have already done it. I think Irish and you came to the last one when Robert was out when he had about 80 to 80 people in the room. That was worth it, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, come along to. The uh, next preview, and you'll find out what I have in in mind. So, um, so guys, thank you very much. Great having you on the call tonight. I will, we will be, I'll be on the call next week, and next week we'll be talking sales and marketing, um, generating income, and I will have more than likely have a guest who I will interview, ask some questions of, and uh, create some different added value. So you guys be blessed. Have an incredible evening and uh, have a great week. Get out and sell. Remember, sales equals income. You need to generate income in order to have a business. And uh, look forward to seeing you in some of our rooms coming up soon. Otherwise, we'll chat to you next week on our preview. Marlon, over to you. Thanks, dude. Thanks, Barry. Um, I don't know about you guys, but that was, even though, you know, the, the idea is to keep it as simple as possible, there was quite a lot of content and quite a lot of information. So the need to go back through it may arise. And if that does happen, you can go back <clears throat> onto the website, onto uncoveringgreatness.com, and you'll be able to get it there. Way too much content. I need my flip charts, Marlon. Pardon? What is that? Way too much content. I need a shot. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, so you can, as I was saying before I was really interrupted, the, you, can, you can get your resources, you can go to the resources section of the site um, and, and you can get the past webinars there. You also get, you also get um, some, some, uh, some, all of the past webinars as well as this one will be uploaded probably this evening. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining us. It was absolutely great. Thank you very much, Barry. Excellent content. Loved it. Going to definitely um, use some of this content myself. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Cheers.